have a look at ovarian cycle which you already familiar with that it is divided into three phases follicular phase ovulation phase and luteal phase follicular phase is evident when menstrual phase is coming to an end and proliferative phase is starting because as mentioned earlier both cycles are overlapping and moving parallelly so in follicular phase three primordial follicles differentiates into primary follicles and then into secondary follicles but focus here that only one of three secondary follicles is eventually selected for further differentiation into tertiary follicle while the other two are dyed which process is also known as atresia this selected follicle is extremely important as it starts the next phase of ovarian cycle and that is ovulation yes this tertiary follicle contained or mature secondary oocyte which then released from ovary in order to get fertilized and that is the start of second part of ovarian cycle that is ovulation in which an egg is released from ovary into fallopian tube and that process is called basically ovulation and it divides follicular and luteal phase into pre and post ovulation phases like it did in uterine cycle what defines an ovulation is mainly about half way through the cycle on average 14 days since the last menstrual flow began there is a measurable decrease in the woman's basal body temperature followed by a rapid increase in temperature and in her blood level of luteinizing hormone this lh or luteinizing hormone surge appears to be the biochemical signal for starting ovulation how this happens when estrogen levels are high enough this signal to the brain as a result of which interior pituitary causing a dramatic increase in luteinizing hormone which is termed as a lh surge and this spike is basically what causes ovulation to occur this summing up the hormonal control in which at day 5th estrogen from ovary and fsh from pituitary start rising and near ovulation fsh or follicle stimulating hormone starts declining but at the same time luteinizing hormone reaches its peak causing lh surge luteal phase is basically the time between ovulation and before the start of menstruation when the body prepares for a possible pregnancy once ovulation occurs the follicle that contain the egg transforms into something called a corpus luteum and begins to produce progesterone as well as estrogen progesterone levels peak about halfway through this phase following ovulation the follicular cells that remain in the ovary become the corpus luteum the cells of the corpus luteum start producing steroid hormones that i already told you progesterone and estrogen if an egg is fertilized progesterone from the corpus luteum supports the early pregnancy and if fertilization and implantation are not successful the corpus luteum begins to degenerate within 10 days of being formed as a result of degeneration levels of progesterone and estrogen also getting decreased which leads towards the degeneration and shedding of endometrium and the next menstrual flow begins it is a very funny illustration of complete menstrual cycle in which you can see that starting from menstrual phase where we have low estrogen and progesterone levels that small guy performing the character of estrogen getting bigger and bigger under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone telling the whole story of follicular phase and proliferative phases of ovarian and uterine cycles respectively in which estrogen levels are rising and finally reaches maximum just before ovulation then a luteinizing hormone from brain bullying tertiary follicle to spit out an egg from the ovary termed as ovulation and showing the basically the interval of the menstrual cycle 
So after an interval, there is the entry of another character named corpus luteum, who is producing progesterone at very high rates until fertilization occurred. But if fertilization doesn't occur, it is dying off as corpus albicans that finally ends up at menstrual phase which is actually not the end but the beginning of the whole story again. Another very good abstract of hormonal control of female reproductive cycle where a comparison of ovarian and pituitary hormones is obvious. At the end, a very interesting question comes to my mind that hormones are controlling physiological functions of menstrual cycle but who is controlling these hormones have you ever listened about feedback loops which are actually controlling these hormones they can be positive and negative feedback loops let's understand this concept with the help of this in which menstrual cycle phases are described in terms of feedback loops starting from hypothalamus who is releasing its gonadotropin releasing hormone or GNRH which is positively telling pituitary to produce its hormones follicle stimulating hormone and LH or in short FSH and LH and they are in turn passing orders to ovaries and uterus to produce their hormones estradiol estradiol don't worry about estradiol estradiol is also known as estrogen and we know that estradiol as granulosa cells under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone converts estradiol into estrogen and now the high estrogen concentrations will eventually lead to a decrease in follicle stimulating hormone resulting in atresia of all but one of the developing tertiary follicles starting negative feedback loop and sending message to interior pituitary that stop producing more FSH and LH then it again switches to positive feedback causing the elevated estrogen or estradiol production from the dominant follicle then stimulates the LH surge that will trigger ovulation and marks the end of follicle phase. And at last in luteal phase positive feedback of FSH and LH continues causing corpus luteum to produce progesterone in case if pregnancy occurs and if there is no pregnancy signs then finally it switches back to negative feedback loop and progesterone sending negative messages that please stop producing more FSH and LH so in this way these hormones are controlled by negative and positive feedback loops so that was the end of my lecture if you like my lecture please subscribe my channel